Well, thank you very much for uh, nice introduction, I suppose. And uh, suddenly, I'm very glad to be here. Um, the, actually, this is my third visit to Brazil, but not not the uh, horizonte. This is, of course, the first visit to me. Um, last week, we had the uh, International Congress on Electron Microscopy held at the uh, Rio. So I was there for, for one week. And then, and then after that, uh, this, uh, 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 about a month ago, hey, uh, the, the professor, the, the, the Marcos Pimenta, should be, should be here. <laughs> so so uh, Rio is very close to it. And then, then uh, I asked him to, uh, to, to, to the possibility to visit you. And uh, he kindly arranged all these uh, um, the seminars. So I'm very appreciated very much. Thank you very much. And actually, we had uh, last night, we had a nice uh, Brazilian guitar music night. And people <laughs> enjoy it. Thank you very much. So, also. OK, so uh, what, you want, what I want to do here is to show you the, uh, what the uh, carbon uh, nanotube look like. And uh, mostly, I'm going to spend kind of uh, the basic uh, the, uh, research on the carbon nanotube. And um, at the end, probably, I, I show you some of the uh, possible applications of carbon nanotube. Okay, so uh, this is my the outline of talk. Uh, the uh, okay, I should say uh, uh, about myself. I am a phys uh, physics uh, trained uh, the, the researchers. Um, but the, uh, mostly I spent the electron microscopy, uh, particularly what we call the uh, high resolution transmission electron microscopy. So uh, in, in the first part of my talk, I briefly introduced the, uh, what the uh, uh, high resolution electron microscopy, what can, what can we do with, with this te technique? So uh, I, I did a brief introduction to that. Then, then uh, I go to the nanotube work, uh, it's uh, more specifically modification of carbon nanotube by doping. The state of art of HRTN, that's again, and, and, and use electron energy loss spectroscopy imaging. Uh, and then uh, the dynamic the HRTM observation of carbon nanotube, uh, catalytic reactions uh, at atomic level resolution. Graphene seed, monatomic uh, carbon streams, and atomic defect in boron nitride sheet. Um, these are all the uh, microscopy work. The low temperature synthesis of nano diamond film and large graphene sheet. This is uh, somehow related to the uh, present hot um, the subject of uh, graphene. So uh, I, I like to speak about the, the, this uh, the synthesis of large size the uh, graphene. And, and uh, lastly, the, uh, I, I'm going to describe about application of carbon nanotube. I, I have plenty of slides, so I, I go very quickly. Okay? Now, the, uh, if you look at the detail the solid state physics uh, um, text, you find the, uh, this kind of image. This is the electron micrograph of, of uh, thin film of uh, the metal. The, uh, Aluminum manganese uh, uh, metal. Then uh, occasionally you find this kind of uh, dark contrast, and th this is what we call the uh, diffraction contrast. And in, in this way, we can uh, the, the characterize the dislocations occurring in, in the solid uh, the, uh, crystal. So uh, this is the uh, before 1970. This is very important technique in, in electron microscopy. But the, uh, uh, then, then in 1970, I, or we started the new the method to, to get the uh, structural information from crystal. So the, this is the uh, typical image. I published this in 1971. Uh, some of the young young born here. Uh, anyway, so uh, comparing these two, the, it's very much different. Um, here, uh, you see some dark region, the white regions, uh, what they are showing the uh, crystalline structures. The dark region actually corresponding to the uh, metal atoms, um, this, this case, the titanium and aluminum oxide. 
Um, so uh, from the electron microscope images, we can get the uh, crystalline structure directly. So the, this, this is the first uh, um, the, the accomplishment uh, of uh, the, uh, knowing the crystal structure from electron microscopy. So that's the uh, technique. And, and uh, until last week, uh, many people were talking about this kind of uh, information. So, uh, of course, um, we can get more detail. Um, also, we can do some of them. Okay, so that's a technique. Uh, for, for instance, the, this one, the, the, this is a little bit the inorganic chemistry. Okay, problem is this: the aluminum oxide, the 29, and if you have the uh, an, another option somewhere in, in this system, then, then we have this sort of uh, not stoichiometric structures. But the uh, chemist found that uh, we, we were missing one option, but they don't know where, where it is. So. so uh, that's the microscopy, it's very helpful. And this one picture, actually, I did a lot of observations. And you see the occasionally dark regions in, in uh, the regular sort of crystal. So these are kind of point defect. And uh, this is actually associated with the, with the, uh, the, the oxygen the deficiency, the oxygen vacancy, actually. Um, if you've grown up somewhere here, then, then you, you see very local the, uh, structure. Yeah, others are all nice uh, the, the motif or pattern, but this one is uh, something wrong. Okay, only this part. Where the, uh, if you look at the more detail, then we have this, uh, this octahedron. At the center, we have the uh, metal atoms. So that we, we, see, we see these dark regions. So these dark regions, uh, we have more the uh, metal atoms. Anyway, so th this is uh, very strange. And then actually, it's the uh, octahedron the, uh, uh, are sticking out from this uh, three by four the uh, seed. So this region gave us the dark region. But the, after certain electron beam radiation, the, this is disappearing. It's gone. So uh, options are moving around. And then, then they come in, and then and, uh, here are two options. And if you supply the option, then, then uh, this one goes back to the normal position. So uh, we don't see the, the dark region. Okay. So in this way, the, uh, we, we, we solve the problem of knowing stoichiometry um, by, by the putting out this uh, option, the uh, vacancies. Okay. So uh, this kind of uh, information is very important because uh, X-ray or other diffraction technique there's no way to see these uh, local structures. That's what we should do in microscopy. Okay. So this is a typical example. It, it, it is very old, but it's something like this. OK. Now, the, uh, um, then, then uh, 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 I, I like uh, the uh, uh, experiment. Because uh, I have done uh, many applications of this kind of uh, the, uh, the observation. And uh, from now, I, I show some of the, uh, the carbon material that I have been uh, done in, in the past. So uh, th this is the uh, C-graphite film, or what you may call the uh, graphene these days. But at that time, there is no, no such word. So, so, so thin graphene, supporting HRTM specimen support. Because gra graphite, the, uh, if you sink down, down to the uh, one layer, the, the, the graphene. So the, still it's crystalline form. So it, it is very nice for supporting the, some, some the uh, material, like, like molecules, onto this uh, graphene. <coughs> so uh, this is the great interest uh, in, in, in like, like, like a biologist, because they are always looking for the nice supporting field to put the uh, molecule or protein molecule onto that. So uh, I, I did the, uh, the thinning of uh, the graphite using this metal. And then this is eaten away. So, 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 so here probably a few layers of graphite. And then this is the metal after tungsten. Okay. So uh, in this way, we can, we can etch to the surface. Um, so uh, yeah, this is chemistry. The W3 reacts with the uh, graphene graphite. So uh, we have the carbon dioxide. 
and then the, the, the metals are there. Anyway, so in this way, uh, prepare the thin film and uh, put the protein molecule, in this case, uh, ferritin molecule onto that thin film. And then try to see the, uh, the uh, organic uh, protein structures. But this was uh, many years ago, so uh, I didn't get to the detail.